You're listening to the IFF TV podcast. Hello, my Irish football fan TV. We are continuing on with our season previews. We've got Drogheda United. I'm joined by Luke McQuillan. Now, Luke is the social media guy at Drogheda, but he did start out by making an Instagram page, uh, a Drogheda United fan page, and went on. And I followed his work on our channels and stuff like that and watched him do a lot of live streams with players throughout the lockdown, a lot of Drogheda United players. And now he's got promoted to social media guys so it was great to see your kind of evolution in that time how, how did that come about did they contact you or did, they, did you contact them no so uh it all started off um i think it was the, the, the start of 2019 i or in the middle of 2019 during the summer it might have been i i set up the draw the united fan page and it, it really just it, initially it, it took a while to, to get going as all good things do they take a while to, to get going initially but uh, once it got going there was a lot of you know, attraction there for it, and um, there was a lot of pop people. People enjoyed the work that I done, and um, so it was sort of then that the lockdown came in, and um, I was, you know, what I mean, it was sort of as a fan, for a fan page, and I'm sure even yourself for the the fan TV, like it's obviously it was difficult to keep the page running during during the lockdown, um, and you'll know that yourself. But I just decided to start up live interviews. Um, Initially, I just done live lives myself. I just sit there talking and ans- answering questions and all. But I won't, it, 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 the views weren't great on it. Do you know what I mean? There wasn't a lot of popularity for that. But as soon as you brought the players in, you're seeing then the views going up. You're getting a lot more messages. You're getting recognised a little bit more. And uh, all the players, I, I think I, I done a lot of a lot of interviews during the lockdown. And then I, I actually had um, Fabio, uh, Declan Fabio O'Brien, um, Drogs all-time leading goal scorer. On and as soon as I think it was straight after that, then I don't think it was long after that, the club uh, Draw United got in contact with me, and uh, it was an offer that I definitely couldn't turn down, and I was only delighted to, to be promoted to the to the social media team. Well, that's great because I actually saw their post, and you you're doing photography there. I think you're doing some other things there as well. So it's great to see you kind of starting starting from the bottom. Now you're here, type of thing, you know? Yeah, well, that's exactly it. Like I do, I'm also doing interviews with players as well. Uh, pre and post match, we have our own um, series as well on the YouTube can- channel called uh, Draw the United Preseason Weekly. So uh, that's that's been really good. The views on that have been really good, and there's a lot of popul- pop- people like that one as well. So um, the Draw the fans have been really good to that towards that, and the players as well have been so good with their time during preseason. And it's it's good to get like an insight on preseason uh, from the players who are obviously experiencing it, and it's it's a lot. It's a new one for for the Draw the players, obviously to making that step up now to the Premier Division. Yeah, but you're doing great work there, John. Um, I don't know if you're behind it, but obviously you, you you must pay some sort of influence to it. You've got now the head in the game uh, has now been the, the name change from United Park. So how did that come about? And do you want to give us a little bit more insight on it? Yeah, no, um, the club done a, a, a draw um, for a stadium renaming and it was great to get the head in the game involved. I think that's a great organisation there with great people involved. But, I've had different conversations with different people involved with with that um with that organisation and it's it's absolutely fantastic. It's a great platform for for players, you know what I mean? If and fans as well of the League of Ireland, I think they've done a great video there. It might have been during the lockdown where they had um don't turn your floodlights off, um and it was you had that you had obviously like ex League of Ireland players, current League of Ireland players, fans, players over abroad or not and over there or players abroad as well who. Who also um, came in as well for it, so I think that done really well, and that there have been they've been so good to everyone in the League of Ireland uh, of a recent. So uh, it was great that that um, we could come together um, and get the the stadium renamed and done, and it was a it was a really really good uh, great initiative, and it's uh, brilliant to play a small part in it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Obviously, with mental health and stuff like that, it's a big issue. So the fact that uh, the lads are highlighting that and now draw it as well are highlighting it even more with the, the name change and kind of bringing in a lot more eyes on the Head in the Game project. That's what it seems to be anyway, um, which is great to see. Obviously, yeah. promoting mental health, promoting people to talk and stuff like that. So check them out. I think it's uh, Head in the Game is the the social handle yeah. there on on their platform. So so go and check them out. Uh, so, Luke, anyway, we said we get you on and we talked about Drogheda United. Um, I felt like you were the man to go to, obviously with the fan page, you know, you're the social media guy and you're interviewing the players. So you have a total insight to everything. You didn't miss a game uh, after COVID. So this is exactly what I kind of wanted to talk to you. So talk me through, I suppose, the, from the season up to COVID and then kind of after that and how hard it was and then coming back into... Um, the, the rhythm of things then after the lockdown 
Yeah, so obviously we know uh, at the start of the season, Drogba only played three games. Um, Cove away, 2-0 win, a good result. You know what I mean? Cove never an easy place to go to. Um, and then long for, the, long for the home where we lost 1-0, but probably thought we could have won that game as well, um, to be honest. And then UCD um, at home before the lockdown when we won 5-1. So that was another a good result. And I think that was, you know, we were gaining momentum then. I think it was then we were supposed to be playing next Saturday against Shamrock Rovers B and Tala. And that's when everything happened around this time last year when we all, you know, were put on, on under strict rules uh, for a few months. So for the football to stop and, you know, even for the fans and like at that time, I was only a fan going to the matches and you're like, when are you going to get back? You know what I mean? When are we going to get back? And, and I'm sure fans are still saying that to themselves now, you know what I mean? Heading into the 2021 season and there's no, nobody has any idea when when, will we, when fans will be back. So um, coming back in then, you know, Shamrock Rovers B, uh, we played then, on, I think it was uh, the Sunday or yeah, the Sunday after, after uh, the reassumption of the league. So, um, it was. It's been difficult. It's obviously been difficult, and um, I don't think, I don't think the volunteers in in the clubs, uh, get get that recognition they deserve because I think, uh, I don't think the league would be would be still going if it wasn't wasn't for them. Uh, everyone has has had real strict rules, and I think every club and and I think the League of Ireland. I've been, I've been quite a fan of how how all the clubs in the league have have dealt with uh, COVID. So, uh, and uh, I think um, it, it's been great, and it's it's really good, and I'm sure that's going to continue now to into the into the 2021 season yeah no i would agree with that because obviously i was going to games as media and stuff like that and and like they did follow absolutely every rule yeah. they did keep you know you had to wash your hands you had to get your temperature checked as you walk into the stadium you had to sit away from people there was social distancing as well now i appreciate there's not going to be that many people at uh, league of Ireland games in comparison to Premier league or whatever but there was still spaced out it was still rules. If someone sat near the other person, security guards were, were saying it, you know, you have to move away from there, you can't sit there and stuff like that. So it was a real shame then when I suppose supporters supporters were let back in for a little bit, teased a little bit and then completely taken away by the government. And I felt sorry for the clubs because obviously clubs massively rely on that, you know, that income through paying customers coming through the door and even that you're only still getting a handful of maybe people getting drawn in season ticket holders as well so i think it was nice that some of them got to come in and that bit and and that kind of way but i would like to see as you say fans come back as soon as possible probably in the second half of the season that's what the talks are um that would obviously be ideal i think i think a lot of clubs actually suffered from the lack of fans i think shells were one that definitely suffered from the lack of fans um I would uh, well, I wouldn't say Finn Harps because they finished the season quite quite strongly, but there was a lot of clubs that definitely suffered and kind of after after that uh, break kind of went downhill. But Drogheda it seems went you know up a level and then obviously getting promoted as champions. So that must have been you know a really good season. Just, well, in a year of madness, it must have been good for you. Yeah, it was brilliant to be honest with you. And um, I've said it so many times and on different things. You know what I mean? It's just it was just and it was unbelievable. You know what I mean? A year year that you won't forget but there's a year that you might not you might not want to remember either but for for myself hmm. uh for everything that happened in, in the year in 2020 it was a great year for myself personally and for and as well for Jordan United so um I think as a club it's been fantastic since since the lockdown um like all the other clubs it's ever it's followed all the rules the strict rules and everyone has everyone has played a massive part in that so uh it was great then to, to get that league title in the end. It was a, a different kind of celebrations, uh, as you can only imagine. Um, you know, it was only a few of us in, in Stradbrook that night we won the league. Um, and yeah, it was just an unbelievable night and uh, one that we'll definitely remember. And hopefully we can have uh, more moments like that now in the in the future. Hopefully with fans, I think it would have been a great occasion for the fans. I'm sure there would have been thousands of draw the fans in at that match uh, in Stradbrook that night. Um, so... It was just a disappointment, disappointing on that sort of sense, but uh, still, still a great moment to win the league. Yeah, well, I think it could be vital this season if Fraud are struggling after the, the the second half of the season and fans are let in. It may give them that boost, you know, that they may need just to kind of get them over the line in games and stuff like that. Especially, obviously, at home. Um, you know, Drogheda is not a good place to go to. I know. Look, I'm a Shells fan, and I was obviously there the night when Shells got. You know, won the league up there, but it was a very, very you know hostile kind of atmosphere, and it wasn't a pleasant place to go. I was surprised that we actually got the result on the night because, 
It was. It's very kind of small, close to the action, but you know you could hear absolutely everything. Mm. So I think that's a massive advantage if you can get the fans back in, hopefully. But uh, we'll come to this season in a sec. But I want to just talk about the players that have left the club. And Andrew Dempsey has a list up on the football. Uh, the football scope dot blogspot dot com. I always stutter when I'm saying that, but uh, anyway, um, the players that have left the club, I'm going to start off with Luke, if you don't mind. So Stephen Meaney's left for Atlone Town. Richie Far- Richie O'Farrell has left for Bray Wanderers. Adam Wixted has left for Atlone Town. Derek Prendergast um, has just left. He hasn't got, he hasn't got a club. Luca Gratzer has gone to Cabin Teal. So of any of those players, are you going to really miss that much? Because I know Prendergast, he helped just get promoted he also had shells the season before get promoted and left so i don't know what the story is there with him but is there anyone there who you kind of were like i'm sad to see him go personally i was i was i got a quite you know what i mean um i got along well with uh stephen mean really nice fella um really nice footballer as well to watch it'll be a great addition for atlanta so i really hope that he'll he'll succeed there and i'm looking forward to seeing how he does there and um, Dell, as you mentioned, you know, he was just unbelievable, even for Shells when you when Hughes got promoted and then last season for us, just that experience in the back and it, that experience you can have around the dressing room. He's, he's he's a leader really, you know what I mean? And one of the you know, some games he was just unbelievable for us. So uh he'll definitely you know, you'll be missed, but um a lot of good players as well that we brought in I know we'll probably talk about. So it's uh, it's uh, it's good to see that we're we're adding as well, you know. We just want to take a quick break to speak about our sponsors for this video and podcast, Team Fipe. As you can see in the image there, some of the clubs that Team Fipe has acquired, Shamrock Rovers being the main one so far. Team Fipe is an easy to use online payment platform that covers management and administration, finance, club development, communication, governance and COVID track and trace. Club administrators save hours of time with Team Fipe, save time on administration and finance. You can quickly confirm, decline and record attendance at club sessions and events. With a new database created, parents and players register with the system which in turn creates and builds a player database for the club. Team groups can be easily set up for easy access to data. Real time transaction updates, Team Fipe keeps club administrators or team managers updated on processed payments but also flags up incomplete transactions and automatically emails the payee to give notice of a future attempt. Team Fipe already works with over 1000 leagues, clubs and academies and are growing all the time. Team Fipe is proud to be helping clubs across multiple sports. Team Fipe is free to use. It's free to install by all of their members. There are no hidden fees. There is no sign up fee, no annual fee, and no monthly membership fee. The processing fee, Team Fipe charge a very modest fee for any financial transaction that they process, similar to the bank or other credit card processor fees. Book your Zoom demo today at teamfipe.com or call on plus 353 1526-7499. Yeah. Well, I'll just talk about the re-sign before we talk about your uh, your yeah. transfers in. If there's anyone missing off the list, just let me know as well, because uh, uh, Andrew's put up this list, and I've been using it for all the videos, so fair play to him, like, um, putting a lot of hard work to get the, all that done. So we've got re-sign, Connor Kane, Mark Doyle, Jake Hyland, Luke Heaney, Mark Hughes, Hugh Douglas, Chris Lyons, Ryan O'Shea, James Clark, Brandon, Brandon Birmingham, Jack Chute, Jordan Adeyemo, sorry, uh, James Brown, Killian Phillips, Mohammed Boudiaf and Sam O'Brien. You can let me know if there's anyone missing off that list. But uh, you happy to see uh, the majority of them back then? And is there anyone who, who you think is going to be really key then for this season? I'd, I'd say Mark Doyle's probably one. Yeah, absolutely. Doyle has been quality. You know, he, last season he got what, first division player of the year. Um, and he was fantastic that year as well. So uh, I definitely think um, he'll be a it's, a... it's a good step up for him. I'm sure it's, a, it's an opportunity he's... He's looking forward to as well. So uh, for the for the rest of the group, you know, what I mean, it's it's a good group there. You know, we a lot of the squad have been there. Well, not a lot, but a good few of them have been there since since Tim has come in about three or four years ago. You know, so um, that's really really good to see that players are, are sticking by and they earned their opportunity now in the Premier Division to showcase their abilities. And there's a lot of young lads there who are absolutely fantastic, like James Clark and Killian Phillips, and uh, Mohammed Booty. As Mohammed and Sam O'Brien, both of them have only come down from the the 19s and um, they got promoted to the senior squad so that was fantastic to see um against wexford in pre-season the first pre-season game we played um, Mohammed Boudiaf was absolutely fantastic and um, 
and uh, he was a really, really, you could see the quality he had. And uh, I think he earned um, straight away that, that that promotion to the first team. So that was really good to see. And it's good to see, like, Tim has given a lot of young lads opportunities. And um, I think that's I think that's great in a manager to have to have someone who will he'll be there to give them younger lads opportunities that, that might not get at different clubs. So I think that's really good. And I think that's, uh, that's why, you know what I mean, it makes a, a successful team last season, um, giving them younger lads, them opportunities who are full of energy. And Brandon Birmingham, a local lad, and the same with Luke Heaney, both local lads. So uh, a lot of young lads there who are who are definitely relishing the opportunity to play in the Premier Division. Yeah, but I think that's, you know, the fact that he has that core group still there, it's not a case of you going up to the Premier Division with a whole new squad. He has yeah. kept a lot. Like, although there's been about four or five dropped out, there's been about four or five dropped back in. So it's not a huge overhaul in terms of the squad. And and then, you, as you said, there's some promoter from the from the youth setup who probably would have been training with the first yeah. team anyway, do you know, so before they obviously got their contracts or whatever. So uh, I'll just go through the transfers in with you. And again, if there's anyone missing off the list, you can just let me know. Um, I mean, there's some real, I think from watching, uh, you know, a lot of these experienced players are really, really good. Um, especially, you know, Dane Massey is obviously one for me that that uh, I think is a massive sign. Gary Deegan, I've been watching with Chels last year. I think he's a really key sign. And then you've got the likes of Dinny Corcoran, who knows the league quite well, scores goals a lot, of, like over the last number of years. He's been scoring regularly and uh, up the top of the, the goal scoring charts. You know, Darren Markey as well, he got from St. Pat's. Daniel O'Reilly, you got from Shells as well. Colin McCabe, you got from Shells. And then Ronan Murray, you got from Sligo. Um, you know, Dane Massey, for me, coming from Dundalk, you know, he was a real leader in that dressing room and, and, and part of that team. He's obviously captain Dundalk a few times and he was there for so long. Um, he, he'll bring a winning mentality, I'm sure. Gary Deegan seemed to uh, bring, uh, brought a winning mentality to Shells, albeit I know they got relegated, kind of lost his way towards the end of the season. But I think in him and you kind of surround him with good legs around him, I think you've got a really good midfielder there and a, and a warrior of a midfielder there. And he really turns it on against the bigger teams, I feel. So if you're going to up against the Shamrock Rovers or something like that and he's sitting in midfield, I think he's going to be really, really good for you. Um, I look at Dinny Corcoran as well as I mentioned there scores goals Darren Markey for me a nice a nice little player but never for me has really fulfilled his potential maybe Tim Clancy can get the best out of him but of that list of players um, you know talk me through in your own words what what you're kind of feeling are you excited about this bunch of players that have come through definitely yeah and no, I to be honest it's, it's, it's unbelievable to see the players that we brought in um, Dan Massey is unbelievable he made his debut there the other day against Dundalk um, against his former club, like, and it was yeah. it was fantastic, you know. Um, and he he played really well that game. Uh, it was great to see as well, you know. Uh, he's won everything with Dundalk that you can win in the league uh, over the last eight years there. So, um, bringing bringing a born winner and and a winning a winning mentality into the dressing room will be will be a big benefit. Um, Deegs as well, you know. You you'll know him well yourself from from shells last season. Scary um, man. <laughs> but he'll definitely he'll definitely bring real you know stability into the midfield and he'll try to break up the play and uh, he'll be quality and I'm looking forward to seeing how looking forward to seeing how he adapts to that um, play he hasn't he hasn't made, he hasn't featured yet for us yet but I'm hoping now soon enough he will um, but um, Colin McCabe as well he's shown real quality in the early stages of preseason um, some really good saves and and he, he's definitely a good signing as well and Daniel O'Reilly I've been I think a lot of fans have been really impressed with so far. Uh, another player from Shells who you might know, but I don't think he. I don't yeah, think he didn't he, play a lot. Yeah, I don't think last he. Year. Yeah, I don't think he got got that good opportunity at, at Shells. Um, but I think now this season he looks to be uh, in really really good shape, and and I think uh, if if he can if he can get in there, he'll he'll hundred percent he'll be a great signer for us. And uh, Dinny as well scores goals for fresh balls for fun, and he he was with Drada, uh back in twenty twenty twelve, so uh, or twenty eleven, um, and uh, he. Uh, He'll definitely bring another another winning mentality winning mentality into the dressing room as well. So some really really good additions there and Darren Markey as well as you mentioned. Um, he, you know, he he he's really a creative player really more or less. And uh, you see, again another one of them players from the early stages of preseason that he will bring quality to the, to the side. And I think Ronan Murray yeah made it made some some impact the other night any the other day against Dundalk anyways with that free kick. Um, so uh, he played well that game as well. So. Uh, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking, you know, new players look to be settled in really well, and even from talking to some of them as well, they they all look they all look to be in good spirits. So uh, it's that's uh, brilliant to see. 
Well, I think with with um, with Murray, he obviously came to Dundalk with a good reputation from Galway. It didn't seem to really work out from him. He had Sligo, didn't really hear much from him last season. I think there is a player in there if you can kind of get the right, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not attitude, but if you can get like a little spark out when he gets maybe an early goal and sparks are running for him, I think you have a real player in your hands there. And I don't think Dundalk got that because they always have players in front of him. He had, you know, Pat Hoob and Georgie Kelly seemed to be in front of him or David McMillan. So he always had players in front of him. I think it's Sligo last year, maybe Ronan Coughlin and um, they had someone else in front as well. I can't think off the top of my head, but I think if you can make him either part of a front two with Dinny or if you can make him your, your sole striker, I think you've got a real player in your hands there. Yeah, he played in uh, a natural, I think it was more like a, an attacking midfielder role the other day. And uh, he looked really, looked real quality there. So I hope he can get like a nice run of form, as you mentioned there. If, if he can, I think I agree with you. I think we, we have a serious player on our hands. Um, the, the group, you know what I mean, looks to be, it's a very fit group, but by, by the sounds of it, you know what I mean, um, it's definitely a very fit group. Um, people work hard and, 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 and people, the players look after themselves. And in, in their in their own time as well, so that's uh, good to see. And I think that you need you need a fit group in the Premier Division. Like there's going to be a lot of games. Like there's what thirty six games, and that's plus like cup cup games as well. So uh, there's a lot of games there as well. So um, you know there'll be Monday Monday Tuesday games, Saturday games, Friday games. So there's going to be a lot of games in a lot of time as well. So uh, definitely you're going to need a fit group, and you're going to need everyone in in the group to to play a part in that season. Yeah, but I also think they're good characters to bring into the group because, yeah. you know, uh, we spoke about the winning mentality. I think Murray would have a little bit of that as well from his Dundalk days too. So, I mean, you're bringing in good characters to mix in with what seems to be a really good group. And I don't think Tim Clancy would have any bad eggs in there. So it seems to be, you know, looking good for draw ahead of this season. Now, we ask everybody before the season to give their, I suppose, give us what position you'd love to finish that you know your heart is gonna and then give me what your head is saying so if you can give us the contrast in view yeah of course like as a fan you want to see our club finish as high as possible so like in my heart i want to i want to see draw the aim as possible aim as high you know what i mean i'd love to your club you know, uh, uh, mid table you know what i mean I'd, I'd love to see us just just be there be there you know what i mean i, I don't want us to to fall behind at all, you know what I mean. But yeah. me, me head is saying I, I, I think a very strong group. And I just, I, I, I think I don't want to give too many predictions. You know what I mean. Um, but it's I, not I like we're, we're not going to hang you at the end of the season to go. No, well, you said you're going to finish here, so feel no, free to look, like look me. Look, you know what I mean. I want to be realistic as well. So look, I, I, I'd be happy with a seventh. And that's your head. That's me head. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, well, that's that's fair enough. I you mean, know, I, I mean, you're coming up. up. You're gonna have, um, you know, Finn Harps. You're gonna have them kind of there or thereabouts, kind of similar to the way Shells had, and it'll be up or down. And then you might, you may have a, a club that will be struggling and end up like Cork. Do you know that'll finish underneath this? So you, you just never know. You know what I mean? Look, that's it as well. You know what I mean? I think. Uh, look, you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not a person to make predictions. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't. I don't normally like doing it, but um, it's something, you know what I mean? I just want to see Drada establish themselves. I want to see them do as well as possible. I want to see the players who have, haven't have had that opportunity yet relish, because uh, we, like, we know there's a quality players there, like players that we haven't even mentioned there, you know what I mean? So I think um, if they can all, you know what I mean, mingle well together, um, I think we have a really, really good group. Hmm. I actually left long for the, that uh, equation there uh, of teams that you caught potentially could be battling with yeah um but yeah you're right i think you know there is quality players there i actually do think myself that draw they would stay up i think that would be the main thing i think it's just as you said establishing this, the club and just staying up i think that's the main yeah. thing because from playing against draw um as she, with shells like not that i played but uh, from watching it, it seems to be a really good team but really hard to beat now, that's yeah. why i said i was really surprised when we when we ventures up in um I'm gonna call it head in the game park now, but um, when we bet us up there, I really, yeah, I was really surprised. I thought Shells that night showed great character, and I don't want to be bringing up bad memories for Jordan fans. These are up and we are down now, so um, you will be having the last laugh at us right now. But I think you definitely are in line with the players that you've bought, the manager that you have, and the squad that you've assembled. I think definitely uh, would be in a shout. Just to stay up, I think would be 
you know, just for this season and then next season look to build on that and obviously yeah, establish yourselves and, and, and bring in other players of the of the similar quality that you've brought in as well. Yeah, like surprise a few teams as well, I think would be would be nice. You know what I mean? Like like the the you know what I mean? It's about surprise and you know what I mean, it's surprise everyone, you know what I mean? I wanna I just wanna see draw that surprise people and I wanna see uh I just want us to be, you know what I mean, up there and I want us to just to do as well as possible because as I mentioned, it's, it's a great group, you know what I mean? It's a real close group as well and it's a real close knit group. So uh, I hope, um, and as well with, with Tim and Kev, you know what I mean? Two very, very good managers, you know what I mean? Um, so they'll definitely uh, play a big part as well and uh, I don't know where, where we would be without them. So they've been absolutely fantastic as well. And don't forget to give yourself a pat on the back as well because you're obviously part of that click now with your social media um talent so fair play to you as well you keep up the great work as well um we're gonna leave it at that luke i can't thank you enough i thought that was really insightful a, a really good point of view from someone who's obviously involved in the club obviously a fan too so it's good to get kind of all aspects from yourself so a huge thanks to yourself for coming on thank you very much thanks for having me paul no bother guys if you like this video obviously drop a like on the video don't forget to subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments how do you think johada will do this season what do you think of their transfers and uh, don't forget to give Luke a follow as well. And we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching and take care. The IFF TV Podcast. Like, rate and subscribe.